Thank you. <clears throat> Question number four will we'll be, uh, begin with Patrick. The proposed passenger rail line won't be coming through Knox County. So where do you see Knox County going in the next five years with advances in its infrastructure, such as roads, bypasses, and trains? I said earlier that the railway system was a problem. If it was so financially, if it's such a good financial opportunity, somebody else could have already done it. The better question is, what does Knox County want to do? We need to come. You know, we need to decide together. It's our it's our county. What do we want to do with it? That's what we need. That you know, it's, it's for us to decide. It's not for the state of Ohio to spend to to get four hundred million dollars from the federal government that we first of all can't pay in the first place. Lou Petros explained to us how how much debt we the federal government's in, how much that you know borrowing money from the federal government's just a losing proposition. What do we want to do? And we need to do, and as, and as local people, and the citizens of Knox County and Mount Vernon, what do we want to do here? It's for us to, you know, we need to come up with a solution, not the state. As a business owner, I'll, I'll do everything I can, providing I can survive through the taxes long enough. But, you know, I'll do what, I'll do what I can. I'm putting a wireless system throughout the county already working hard to, to provide internet to people, to improve educational education for people as well, so that they can be able to have a high-speed connection to be able to learn online. It's a very good tool, a very good tool to for people to learn, how to, for people to learn, so that they can maintain their, you know, keep their families together, so they can keep their money in order, cut their costs, like the state should be doing. So it's, you know, to get to, in transportation, we need to determine on our own. But spending money on a railway system that nobody wants in the first place is just ridiculous. Thank you. Um, I do sit on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee on the House, and I can tell you that the Republican side is not in favor of the, ra the rail. We've sat through meetings. Um, it's not going to benefit um, the majority of the people. It's, as was mentioned with the Senate, um, will not help this district at all. Um, it was mentioned that it would take you at least 45 minutes to get to a train station to get on it. You can, all, you can almost drive to Columbus or Cleveland in the meantime. I can tell you also that I am working on I-71 for those who drive through Morrow County. It's one of the poorest counties, which is part of my district, and it's only got a four-lane uh, I-71 through there. They've gone through, the state has gone through, they've widened those bridges, and I keep questioning when are you going to get the extra lane through there. And they told me it wasn't even on the plan to be done in the next 10 years. Well, that's not acceptable. So I am fighting very hard to get that moved up. The, the ODOT has money. They could, they could fix that without too much problem. That would in, increase the flow down through there. You could easily get from Columbus to Cleveland without a bottleneck. Here back in, in February, there was a 40-car 40, 40 pileup because part of it had to do with the um, uh, road conditions. But if they had that third lane there, people would not have sat on the southbound lane for over five hours to get through there. So I've been pushing Oda very, very hard to get that project moved up to a priority. Now there again, like I said, I have they have the money there. It's not that they don't have the money to do it. They're moving. They're using their money um, down in Columbus. They're, they're using it in um, Delaware. They're not using it uh, to help us. If that was was done there, I've talked to Area Development here in Knox County, and I've talked to Fredertown Development. Um, businesses are willing to come here if they have access to good infrastructure. So therefore, I am pushing very hard for that. They keep talking about jobs. We have uh, companies here in Knox County that um, could increase their their um, employees 
if they can get these jobs moving. So therefore, I feel very, very passionate about that. As far as bypasses, they have, um, you know, they've discussed a bypass around Mount Vernon. You're going to use up a lot of, of um, good farmland in order to put up a, a, a bypass. So I'm not in favor of, of using taxpayers' dollars to put a bypass out through there. Um, and I think that should answer all your questions. Question number five, we'll begin with Margaret Ann. If you are successful in the race, what would you bring to the citizens of Knox County? Well, um, there again, um, it's very difficult. It, when you're sitting in the job, you don't realize how hard it is to get legislation through to help people. I, I hope uh, I'm going to work very hard to be in the majority next year. And once we get into the majority, we can get bills to move. We need to elect people that will get things done. Um, what I will do when I'm elected, I will work at lowering taxes. I will try and push the, uh, the, the reduction of the cabinets over there in Columbus so that we can balance that budget without stimulus money. This year we balanced it with stimulus money. We, we also went back to the taxpayers. They passed House Bill 318, which um, everybody had a reduction in their personal income tax. And it was the last year of that reduction. They froze it retroactive to January 1st. That's not fair. Um, we need to get rid of the, the personal income taxes. So I will, if elected, I will work towards getting those done. And um, I will work to, uh, um, help solve some of the problems that this current governor has done to our school system um, in talking to him. The calamity days are making a big hardship. Um, changing the rules in the middle of stream is not good. They want to change so everybody has all day kindergarten. Well, that's a hardship on our public schools. Some of them don't have all day kindergarten, so they're going to have to add classrooms, they're going to have to add teachers. They're, they're talking about reducing the size of the classroom. Um, right now it's at 25 to 1. They built their new schools based on that. And now they're, they're saying it has to go to 15 to 1. Well, you, in order to reduce your, your class size, you, you need more classrooms. Well, um, the taxpayers can't afford to do that. So, you know, I will work on those items. <laughs>